And there was a new one that OpenAI came out with for video, yep. which was freaky. It came out with like a trailer. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah. It was like a trailer of, I forgot even what it was, but the humans, it, they looked like real, realistic humans doing something. And the, you could see the emotions on their face. You know, it was actually like I was watching something. Now, there's still a little, a little bit where you can tell this is AI, but when you watch it, you're like, wow, we are close. We are so, very close. So they actually gave me uh, early beta access to that. Really? And when you try it out, like, of course, what you've seen is a highlight reel. It is the marketing of its capabilities. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that you'll struggle to get exactly what you want. But that's part of the learning curve. It's the prompt generation when you're trying to get Dolly or Mid Journey yeah. to like draw you a, a knight, I don't know, a princess, a, or storyboard, a new product. It, you don't know the language to use to generate the things that you want. So I have a question then. So when this evolves and it gets very realistic, mm -hmm. will there be issues with copyright or do you think that people, because I always think like if I, if I create an AI movie, let's say, yeah. and it, I put it out to the world and it's a really good movie. It's very like engaging. People love to watch it, but also they know it was made by AI. Does that change anything? Will that change? Because if I just type in a prompt and they knew that the only time spent on creating this masterpiece was 30 minutes of creating a really good prompt and then that came out, do you think that takes away from the credibility of the video or the movie of the AI or do you think that people will still be able to enjoy it? There will always be people who say AI generated anything is an abomination, that it is not right that they will take human design, human works of art, photography, like video, all this, any day. But when you look at the actual numbers, when you look at the data, mm -hmm. so I've helped quite a few different marketing departments integrate AI. Mm -hmm. And there was this one channel that they were a meme page. And they had several different meme page. They do have several different meme pages on Instagram that they run for finance firms, for different industries. And the like AI generated memes mm -hmm. due to three time, two to three times more engagement no than way. normal memes. Wow. Now let's dissect it a little bit. Memes are a safe place to use AI at the moment because a meme is a comical, over-exaggerated, relatable, funny way to tell something truthful, right? right. To tell history yeah. in a certain way. And so the more over the top you can make it, the, the more of a dopamine hit people are going to get when they relate to that image and that visual combined with your, your quote. I would agree with that. Yeah. So I've seen AI generated images being used for memes perform better than anything out there. I think I know why. Well, I'm, I want yeah, you yeah, to no, say, I wanna hear. but I want to guess first before you say, <laughs> but maybe because AI takes away the emotion of everything, right? And they can go over the top because they don't care about the repercussions of backlash from the media, right? You have to remember, AI is just a tool. Yeah. At the end of the day, it is not going to be able to do anything without a human being telling it to do that thing. So it's a human being that's generating those that's, memes. Yeah, that's true. That's generating those videos. That's generating that content. It's just a creative. Mm. And this is one of the biggest issues I've seen 
and most marketing departments, I've seen it quite a bit this past year where a, a head of a marketing department will say, hey, let's integrate AI into everything we're doing. And then they'll cut half their team. Yeah. But they don't realize that it, it requires people to connect with people. Mm-hmm. Right? Like everything we, the whole point of art is, is to speak, it's to communicate with people. Yeah. At a, at a deeper level, at an intellectual level, at a philosophical level. We don't complain when a person uses a camera to take a picture. Yeah. Because we see it as an art form. That's right. Yeah. Right? Because there's a human behind it. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. Well, what I'm trying to say is like, if I, if I'm a person like for, for a century, right? Almost pretty much a century, maybe more people have been making pictures. They've been making films and it's always taken days, weeks, months, years to create films like a full movie. Now it can take 30 minutes with AI, you know, it, well not now, but you know, as soon in the next year, does that take away because people are so used to it for such a long time in history, people have been making movies like this. Now it's all of a sudden switch from a year making a film to 30 minutes from a prompt. Does that take away from the creative credibility? Do you consider it art when you turn on your phone and you just snap a pic? No. Some people do. Some people don't. It's subjective. But you said no. In what case would taking a picture be considered art to you? I guess I guess in some cases, like if you take out your phone and snap a picture, it could be considered art. Now I'm thinking of it. I'm just saying like I think of it as like art takes – I think in my eyes art takes courage. It, mm. it takes um, effort and courage and creativity and thinking outside of the box, like that's what I think of when I think of art. And when you're putting a prompt, that kind of takes away from all of that, right? Because so it, it kind of removes that courage for me. Because when you're when you're creating a new masterpiece, it takes, you know, you're like, ah, oh, do you know? You think of new ideas. Do I want to do this? Do I not? And if you do want to do it, you you commit to it. That takes yeah. courage to commit to a painting, to commit to a short film that you're going to create. When you have AI, there's no risk. You know, you're like, okay, I'll type in a prompt, see what comes up anyway. That doesn't, to me, that removes the courage. Hmm. So what you're saying is true art takes effort. It takes time. It takes thought. You know, most of the time, but I've also like, there's also been some masterpieces that have been created on accident. Yeah. You know. I go through this and I, I want to hear like what you have to say about art because it's so subjective. And I see everyone focusing on the time piece that you mentioned earlier. The fact that you can now make a movie or video, yeah. what took days, months, now takes minutes. Yeah. The real artists, the people who are going to be able to create works of art, like real art from leveraging AI, their time horizon, I don't see it being affected too much because the real incredible thing that I've seen with AI isn't the speed, it's the volume. It's the fact that you can now, you know, it took you 30 minutes to generate that one video. Mm. You can spend that month or that week or that entire day and generate hundreds of videos, hundreds of variations on your work piece until you refine it into the purest form of what you're trying to communicate, mm. what you're trying to achieve. And that's when I've seen some incredible next level artists on mid journey. That's when I've seen like the the meme pages that I was telling you about, yeah, they they do about fifty to a hundred AI generated memes before they choose which one to actually post. That's a good point, dude. Because 
the virality has a very simple formula that everyone tries to deny. Yeah. And it is content. It is volume. Yeah. It is just time in the industry, putting out videos, putting out posts, quotes, whatever you make day in and day out. One of my favorite books that I don't remember the name of. <laughs> I, I know it sounds it sounds wrong, but it's a book that I came across at a li- in a library uh, when I was in college. Okay. And I never checked it out. I just, I read it. I sat down and I read it all in one sitting. Wow. Was a book about history's greatest artists. Michelangelo, Beethoven, Leonardo, the, like Da Vinci, all yeah. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> like all, all these prolific artists, Picasso, all of them. It was trying to dissect and quantify what made them the best artists of their generation. Okay. And when they mapped out like the top 10 artists of like every era, their volume of music, of paintings, was about 100 times more than people who were ranked below like the top five. Like it was astronomical how much more they put out. And it was literally just that like Picasso, don't quote me on this, but I'm sure he had, I think around 400,000 paintings that he made. Wow. Like a couple hundred thousand. No one in his lifetime had like the second most prolific artist had like 15,000. Yeah. Like there was just no competing. And, you know, we know like maybe the blue arrow, like we know yeah. vague well, things like about Rodin, Picasso. Like Rodin, you know, he, have you, you know, Rodin, the artist, right? The sculptor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the great thinker. Yep. Yeah. I just went to Paris and his museum. I saw the actual great thinker uh, like a month ago, two months ago. And what was fascinating to me is how much, how many failures he had before the act. And it's going to your point, how many failures he had going to the actual sculpture, the final sculpture. And in his museum, they put out the failures, which is awesome because Rodin would be sculpting something and then he'd stop in the middle of it. And then he'd be sculpting something and he'd stop three quarters of the way through it and he'd throw it away. And then you'd see like, these different um, evolutions of how the sculpture, you know, failed and then how it evolved. And then you saw the final sculpture, which is how the whole museum was laid out and was beautiful to watch as an artist myself, because you see not just the finished product, but you see the amount of time that went into it. And that's why that's what I was talking about. And that's what people appreciate is the effort and the failures that go into it because people can relate to that because everyone has failures. Everyone, no one's perfect. And when people see, you know, the effed up sculptures, they can relate to it. That's what makes us human. 